Okay, I'm going to give it like a few seconds before we do the full intro because there's always a lag. I think now we're probably live. So, um, and what's funny is like before we went live, we were talking and Corey was like, we're already live. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> um, but don't worry. Uh, we were just <laughs> revealing our dark evil secrets and our dark connections to um, the deep state. Uh, other than that, um, <laughs> welcome to Art Casters um and this is episode which episode is this guys <laughs> help me out here uh um hold on. <laughs> so, yeah. it's an, epi- it's an episode i want to say 287 i want to say 287 yeah let's go with that 287 of the art casters it's crazy i think after about 250 yeah. of these the the numbers start blurring but I'm really excited about this one. This is kind of a new thing. We haven't really done this too often, but I think it, I thought it was a cool idea. Mike kind of chimed in on the last time he was on. He was like, "Hey, I kind of wanted to like finish my thought, <laughs> you know, like." <laughs> and and uh, it's such a complex topic. And so, like the last time we had Mike on, we started digging into kind of like the theme is basically like rearranging and keeping up the fight as an artist, and um, kind of dealing with a topic that I think we all. Uh, struggle with and uh, just you know when life like kind of throws you curveballs and stuff how do you kind of continue and keep going as an artist and uh, sometimes you have to reinvent yourself and stuff like that so Mike went through this really awesome story of just his journey as an artist and then we had to call it a night so um, the cool thing is we're doing a part two where Mike's gonna actually get more into some of the methods and techniques and uh, process of like of that fight And I think uh, that'll be a good go around, too, because we've all kind of hit struggles as artists. Um, And so maybe we can all kind of touch on as well, like ways that we um, that we, uh, you know, like battle and continue to kind of fight this whole art battle, which is a thing. So. um, So anyhow, I'm excited and I'm totally rambling before we've even done introductions. So let me uh, go make the go around and do introductions. I'm Joshua Kemble. You're on my channel. If you haven't yet, there's this book that I've talked about for about a year now <laughs> uh, called Two Stories, book one, which you should order. It's uh, at a, it's still a ridiculously low rate. I think the last time I checked, it was like $6 for a 120-page graphic novel. That's a really good deal if, if you get it through Amazon. And if you have Prime, you get free shipping. And the cool thing is I, as the artist, get uh, the same cut that I would if it were sold at full price. So I figure it's a good deal for you guys. And it's a good book. It's a book I believe in. It's one that uh, I spent about five years making. And I'm probably going to spend a couple years minimum making uh, the second one, which is what I'll be working on while we do the stream. So that's my stuff. Uh, Corey, where can everybody uh, find your work? And by the way, Corey is, I would say at this point, we should just say Corey is officially a co-host of the Art Casters. He's pretty much welcome here whenever. But Corey, hey, where can no everybody... One, no one talk to me about this. What? Oh, that's, <laughs> uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm sorry. Undo, Corey. <laughs> I have the password to the stream, so... <laughs> that's true. That is true. Corey's sure pretty not. much invited uh, anyway. Black He's got the works. nuclear, the, the nuclear code so we're we got to be kind to Corey. I'm the kid with the football that's like, I don't know. <laughs> but anyhow, so um, Corey, where can everybody find your work and uh, and uh, maybe see that thing that you were going to be working on during this stream? Uh, you can go to Instagram to see the thing that I, the face that I rigged up on this fox, um, and then go to CoreyKerr.com, c o r y k e r r dot com, and that's where all the stuff is. So I'm on mainly on Instagram and YouTube and uh, less and less on Twitter. So, but yeah, that's, that's that. So I'm just rigging up this, the rest of this Fox today. Yeah. And uh, cool. you guys need to be following Corey on Instagram. If you haven't yet, he, he posted a, just a head tilt of this character that he's building where it like mocks up, like it looks three dimensional. It's amazing, but it's like 2d. And he even kind of shows it turn to like, it's almost like a magician revealing his, their secrets. <laughs> and when you see the secret, it's like ingenious. Um, and that that is just one of a million things like that that he'll show in animation where it's like, 
he makes it look easy and it's not. And it, he makes crazy complicated things <laughs> uh, look super easy. But uh, yeah, you guys should be following Corey. Um, all right, Scott, uh, where can everybody find you? Um, you know, I, if, if I'm an aspiring cartoonist, where can I get some some great tips on uh, or if I'm a vet at cartooning and I want some tips, I want a refresher. I want to learn some more about making comics. Where, where can I go? Oh, that's real easy. You can go to where you are now, but just not this channel. You can go to my YouTube channel, and I have a series called Making Comics 101. There's about 79 episodes, <laughs> so plenty of free content, and it's all good content, and it'll teach you how to make comics step-by-step, step, every step of the process from coming up with your idea all the way to the finished product. And if I can share this thing, let's see, right here, if you go to surprise.comics, the logo's kind of hit hiding it but uh yeah go to surprise.comics and this is a new cover that i have it's kind of they kind of cut part of it off i didn't do the graphic design on this <laughs> although i am redesigning their logo and everything so it, hopefully every that'll be incorporated in the website but um yeah surprisecomics.com and you can uh, pre-order uh this exclusive cover that i did for ice cream man uh through image for image comics and uh yeah, I had a blast doing it, and it's uh, limited to 500 copies, so uh, pick one of those up. And how do I get rid of this? Let's see. Stop screen. There we go. I love it, and I th uh, we showed a sneak preview of that on the last uh, the last art casters. So yeah, it's, uh, it's available now. So yeah, but you guys definitely should should order that because that's cool and rare and awesome, and it's Scott Circlin's art. Um, which is really cool too. So, <laughs> um, all right. And then, uh, oh, before we go uh, to introducing our guests, just real quick questions, Scott, or will this take too long to answer? I, I saw Gary oh, yeah. post a picture of him, Gary Hodges, like uh, he had a picture and he was right next to you. And I'm like, you guys met up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not, well, it's not the first time I met Gary in real life, but, but yeah, I, 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 I kind of started a drink and draw now that hopefully things are getting a little back to normal. And uh, I had, had Gary, Gary showed up as well as some other local people that are in the artist community, some of which you may know online. Um, but yeah, so we're hoping to continue doing this maybe once a month or something yeah. and uh, just continue to grow it and everything. I know there are a lot of other people that, that said they wanted to make it that couldn't. Um, so so we'll see. We're just trying to figure out how to keep it growing and how, how to, if it does grow, you know, you know, where to, where to, where to hold it at and all that stuff. But, but it was fun. Yeah. I had a blast. I did. Uh, it was cool because I actually, you know, I brought my camera. So I actually filmed some stuff that I can put on my channel and, uh, you know, just, just artwork. And then, uh, as we continue to go, I'll probably, you know, I probably want to get, I did take some footage and stuff, but you know, maybe just behind the scenes stuff. But, um, but it's kind of cool because I brought my little, you know, in, so insider. So I've got on my art desk that you see in the underground layer, I've got a big giant thing that looks like this. So I just bring this little one and then I bring my camera and set it up. And so it looks like it's in the studio. You never, you never know the difference unless you're watching this right now because I gave them away my secret. So yeah, I, <laughs> kinda, love it. I had quite a setup. I had my, I had my little arm with my camera and, and all that stuff and brought my markers and my pins and all that stuff. So, so anyway, but yeah, and everyone was doing some cool stuff. So yeah, that wow. blast. That's awesome. I, I, I think between that and how cool Surprise Comics seems to be, it's, it keeps making me want to just move <laughs> to a different <laughs> state. Um, but yeah, that looks super visit. fun. At least visit. You yeah, well, visit that's definitely, anywhere. yeah, that's going to have to happen because my son still hasn't seen the Grand Canyon and that's yeah. going to have to happen. And hey, if we're in Grand Canyon territory, it's a oh. bit of a drive, but we can still yeah. you know, make that I'm probably, happen. I'm probably just as close to you as I am to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but we'll, but we'll make really, something work. Really. We'll make something work. Um, but that sounds really fun. All right. So uh, now, uh, without further ado, sorry, it's been like nine minutes, but I was just dying of curiosity to ask that. Um, our returning guest, Mike Emirates. Mike, where can everybody uh, follow your work? Hey. Where can they uh, see some cool dystopian uh, awesomeness? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the all the cool dystopian awesomeness uh can be found on instagram for the most part uh at my full name michael emirates 
Uh, for whatever reason, they won't let you discover me on Google anymore. I'm kind of trying to look into that. I used to be that you just Googled my name and I would pop up, and now that doesn't happen. So you actually have to search and type me in. Um, but yeah, then once is, you get there, it, uh, that's it's pretty much is my just gone? Is it replaced by another Mike Emirates? Uh oh, did I freeze him? I think he's got. It's a not replaced. Okay. It's just it doesn't show up in in Google search. I don't know why. That's so insane. Yeah, super weird. But uh, well, but yeah, that's where I'm post. Oh no, everything Mike. that's from posting. Drop out again. Yeah. yeah you're uh, out. Well, just so just to let everybody know, uh, so Mike Mike has a bit of a connection I, oh. um, issue. So if <laughs> if he does drop out, we'll we'll continue and kind of roll through it. But just bear with us. Sorry. Okay. I will I will guess what Mike is going to say every time he drops out. That's I like that. Tonight. Nice. That would be a good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So um, so Mike, I'm sorry. Can you just one more time just kind of let people know uh, where they can find your stuff if not on Google. Sorry, because I think between all that, we might have lost that. For sure. Uh, Instagram at uh, my handle right there. So awesome. type that in yes. Instagram. You should be able to find me, no problem. Yes. And then Sisyphean Complex, uh, too, right? The website that still works? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I haven't okay. updated in a little bit, but that's that's where I put most of my finished stuff, like finished illustrations. Uh, that's where my commissions good, good, page good. is, if you're looking for commissions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I, I think uh, you guys actually should check out uh, Mike's commissions and stuff, too, because uh, he does, like, these are not your typical internet commissions like it's you know a lot of artists will do commissions and they do them like really loose and like watercolory and stuff and then michael will do it and it looks like the cover of like the next best-selling comic like they're they're incredible so <laughs> check them out all right um so okay so like for the topic like uh so we, we kind of got into this last time where we talked about uh, a lot of the struggles and stuff that you had gone through um, in the past few years, like starting with just like hand issues and like social stuff. And like, um, I think the last we heard was that like, uh, re related to like kind of, um, seeking out like kind of therapy and finding out a little more about yourself. And, uh, so all of that, like, I don't want to retread, um, yeah. background. <laughs> so I, f I, I figure maybe we can kind of go from there and talk about, um, maybe like what kind of has gotten you back on into the grind of making art and uh, what's, what's kind of like your motivating factors. Um, what kind of keeps you, keeps you interested and engaged in it and kind of keeps you uh, keeping up the fight with the whole uh, content creation and stuff. For sure. Yeah, man, I just, I can't do anything else. That that's the main thing that that's the, the through line of it all. Um, I've tried, I've tried a bunch of different gigs. I've tried a bunch of different careers and this is it. I mean, I, I just keep coming back to it. So it's funny because um, <clears throat> I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine the other day and cause he's kind of struggling with some stuff and I, I've been trying to help him too. just motivation wise you know like not not that i have all the answers nobody does but sometimes when you're like in a funk you know if you're as long as you're as long as a person isn't also in a funk they can help you they can give you some advice you know and um i was trying to tell him you know hey you know you know, pick yourself up all that kind of stuff you know why don't you try to do this or that and he's like man i don't know i've just i've never been as disciplined as you and i was like I mean, uh, you know, a lot of times you could uh, mistake uh, stubbornness for discipline. <laughs> you know, it's not not necessarily that there's a magic solution, but just that kind of tenacity of just like, uh, I'm just not going to give up. Um, that's pretty much, uh, I don't know, that's my guiding light. I'm just, I'm too stubborn to quit is, is basically the sum of it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys relate to that in, in any way. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of artists might. <laughs> The one thing I always say is, and it's true, at least for me, is that I, I don't have a plan B. I never have. And when you don't have a plan B, it's like, well, you got to make this work. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's I, like, that's all I know how to do. I don't know how to do much else. Yeah, seriously. It's like, it's not plan B, it's plan A point 
15. <laughs> <laughs> New version of the same goal. <laughs> Mine is just I've done, you know, plans A through F and I don't like them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exhausting options. That, that That's exactly to the, the virtual point that I was making is I've tried so many things. Even in creative fields, I've tried a lot of things. I mean, more than I care to admit. I, just anything, you know. Give me a job. What can I do? I, I just know that I can't do a nine to five. Not that I'm completely incapable, but just I'm, I'm not suited for it. I, I've been fired from just about everything I've done. And not because I'm a bad employee, but just, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a weird dude. I get, I get antsy. I get anxious. I gotta, I've always got to be doing stuff. When I was uh, a teenager, I, I literally wrote a book while I was working at Barnes & Noble. I was supposed to be behind the counter you know, at the cash register, checking people out, doing inventory and that kind of stuff. But every free moment I had, this idea just wouldn't get out of my head. So I'm writing on the back of like return slips and the, the pink part of the receipt tape and stuff after you change it out. And I wrote a whole book that I, I had in like a little stack behind the counter. Managers used to yell at me constantly, tell me I had to stop doing it. I, I couldn't, like, <laughs> it didn't matter what they said. I just, I would find a new way, you know, I'd have a little receipt in my pocket and write it there. Like, just, I was compelled to do these things or take like an hour and a half long uh, bathroom break. You know, <laughs> Where, where's Mike? I don't know. He's been in the stall forever. I think he's writing a novel. <laughs> like, yeah, he is. <laughs> but so, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've tried too many things and nothing is ever, nothing makes sense. I can't stick with it long enough to, to have that be any more viable than this is. So. Yeah, that, that resonates a lot. Um, I, and I've had different points, you know, in my life where sort of the statement you were saying about, like, I can't do anything else <laughs> have like, there's times like right now I'd say I'm, I'm pretty happy about that actually about myself. Like there, there, you know, um, there are days where I'm like at work and I'm feeling like, Oh, like, uh, works a drag or whatever. And then I have to remind myself, like, there's people like laying bricks and stuff out there, you know? And it's like, I'm getting to yeah. draw. <laughs> and be creative and get paid for it. And that's a pretty cool thing. Um, so no matter how like stressful that gets, it's like, it's to, I'll take it because it's fun and it's fun to be able to do, do something that I'm good at. And I think, um, you know, the other thing that I, I have to remind myself of is like times where I was working like retail and I would like draw, like you were saying, like on napkins or something like that. And if, even if I had the opportunity to draw, this is before doing it professionally, because please don't do this to me at work now. But, but it's like, but, uh, but, you know, if somebody was like, hey, you know, like if I had a manager or something, he's like, hey, we need a new sign. Could you like, I know you draw. Could you do, I'd be like, yeah, I could draw. I could draw. And then I'd be like getting a kick out of like, I'm getting paid right now while I'm drawing. This is fun. <laughs> I have to remind myself of that now because it it is easy, I think, as we do this thing for a long time to have that statement I can't do anything else. I'll also be like a really negative thing. Cause I've definitely had times like that in my life where, you know, um, I remember like when Ben was first born, um, my, you know, I was adjuncting like teaching college classes and then doing freelance and freelance was like really dried up. And then adjuncting for anybody out there who thinks that pays wild amounts of money, uh, go adjunct to class at a college. <laughs> You'll be surprised. It does not. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so we were like really poor and like, and, and like, I just felt like this total loser. Like I was like sending out stuff for, for art. And I was like, there, there was, so my, my point in bringing that up is like, I definitely had like, you know, a good half a year where I think I got like addicted to playing like a stupid video game on my phone. Cause I was so depressed about <laughs> having chosen the life of an artist. Right. Um, so that's years ago. I mean, that's like almost a decade ago now, but it's like, it, you know, uh, th there are definitely seasons, at least I've experienced that, you know, where it's, it's like, that can be a really positive thing where it's like, Hey, I can't do anything else. That's awesome. Um, this is my thing. Like it kind of almost, it makes sense for your identity a little bit. And then there's times where that can be like a real trap, you know, <laughs> so, or totally. feel like a trap. Um, 
so yeah, like I don't know, like uh, I don't know if that's relevant at all, but that definitely oh, came to big mind. Big time! I, you that. actually saying those words kind of helped me kind of clarify kind of what I was trying to say because you said, you know, I can do anything. That was kind of my attitude for a long time. It wasn't it wasn't that oh that's this is all that I could do? It was the opposite. It was you know what do you need? I could do anything. Just give me work. You know oh you need a costume guy yeah sure i could do that let me do that i i need work you know oh, you need a prop designer yeah sure i could do that every single job that came in my way i didn't turn anything down it was after going through the gamut that i was like oh man i can't do most of these things <laughs> i really can't do anything <laughs> there's a limited uh, there's a limit to this <laughs> but you know i i think it also kind of boils down to uh that that sort of like not like an innate ability or anything like that. It, that's not what I mean at all, but sort of like a, I don't know, you're drawn to certain things, you know? And when you're drawn to it and you're, you're into it and for whatever reason it, it gets you and it engrosses you, that becomes like your thing that you can be, you know, good at, you know, you, you could be best at that thing versus like the myriad of other possibilities out there, you know? So I don't necessarily believe in talent, but, um, but maybe maybe a certain propensity, you know, maybe there's a combination of variables that makes you more drawn to certain things than others. And, and maybe that is kind of a factor in some of that. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I, you know, like it, it I, I've realized this about myself in the last year or so, too. And I think part of it might be possibly autistic. I'm still getting that assessment thing going because they referred me to another thing. So it's like this long, arduous, annoying process. But anyhow, uh, point being like, whatever it is about me, I have a really hard time uh, giving uh, one shit about anything I don't care about. Like, <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Like, if I'm not interested in, in yeah. something, it's I'm really hard for me to like <laughs> even dip into it because it just feels like it, it just feels counter to my identity um whereas like if i'm really into something i can just like dive in and you know dedicate like years to something because i i just i i love it and if i love something i'll i'll do it like um and i i kind of think about like like my sisters for instance like had piano lessons when they were kids and they hated it right um and the only reason we were even able to do it was like my aunt knew how to play piano and like we had to live with my aunt when we were pretty poor and she was like, Hey, I'll teach you guys piano. And by the time I got to the age where I'd be able to learn piano, like it wasn't even on the table as an option. Cause they had just had such a rough time trying to get kids that aren't into something into something. And mm -hmm. so my, my parents were just like, Oh, you can't force, you know, like you can't kind of force that on a kid. Like it, 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 if they don't want to play music, like they're not going to play music. What's weird is, Years later, I just picked up a guitar on my own. Like that was just because I really liked rock and roll. I really liked punk rock. I like music. And I picked it up because I had to. Like it is it, like just a thing. Like I loved a thing. And so I had to be a part of it. So I definitely relate to that because I I feel like um I, I've I've seen that with myself and with other people where it's like you can't force uh, that spark, like that thing that causes somebody to like have an interest, um, in stuff. Like I, I have a friend who's a math professor and it baffles my mind, uh, because I, I hate math so much. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, uh, she'll, she'll tell jokes that are like about math and think they're hilarious. Just like you, you know, you and I might like tell a joke about, comics you know and be like <laughs> and somebody else will be like we'll make a, a, a diss on papyrus or something and be like ha -ha. um but it's like that but with math jokes and th there are some people who just um it's it's not that she didn't work hard it's not that she didn't like dedicate a lot of time to like getting like a doctorate in the thing so she could really learn it but it's it's like i don't know if any of that time or investment would like that thing at the base that kind of drives it in the first place I, I don't know if you can kind of force that on someone and that's that. Uh, so I, so I totally uh, a long winded way of saying, like, I think I get what you're saying. Cause I, I don't know what that would be, but it's like that spark is, is really hard 
and it's hard as a t like when you're teaching design or illustration or, or comics, it's, it's hard too, because you can't force a kid to like want it or to want to get better. Like that's the one thing you can't really do. Like you can kind of try to ignite a fire or, 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 or like fan flames, but like if, if there's nothing at that core, like it, it's really, um, it's like the one, I don't know. I feel like it's the one thing you can't teach. You can like guide it. You can crush it, which is terrible, but, um, but to actually whatever that initial thing is, I, it's hard to pin down what that is. That that's like the dry, I guess drive might be it, you know? Yeah. Um, something. I'm rambling, but maybe Corey disagrees. Corey's like, I have made every student I've ever had has had perfect drive. <laughs> right. Right. Corey? Uh, no, actually. Um, I, I actually think talent is my mom and I disagree. She's an artist as well. And she thinks you just have a feeling in your hand that you can kind of grow. I think <clears throat> there's kind of an initial like eye, like being able to kind of depict and like see something that other people can't. But uh, I think talent is actually based on um, just something that gets you. It's, it's enough of an interest that gets you through the hard part because like everybody who's starting out at stuff struggles. And I think those that become good at something, um, they might not remember the struggle because they were interested in it. And so it didn't feel as much of a struggle. So then they say, Oh, it just always came easy to me or whatever. You know, it's like there was a struggle at some point, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, I think people have a propensity towards or away from certain things and there's, going to be more or less of a struggle, you know, based on, you know, based on that propensity. But, but yeah, I mean, as far as drive goes, um, I, I have spent seven and a half years trying to figure out how to teach drive and uh, nothing that I've done so far has worked. So I don't, I've read a lot of material on it. I've attended lectures on it. I've talked with people who are like, actively studying it and researching it in like behavioral sciences and things. And um, so far the best that everybody can do is identify the characteristics that cause it, but not how to get someone to have it or not have it. Yeah. It's so weird. It's, it's a baffling thing. And it's one of those soft sciences yeah. where it's like really hard to, you know, pin down and, you know, it's, it's not like saying, you know, the electrode is on or the electrode is off. It's like a human judgment of whether somebody has an attribute or not. And so that always kind of like skews all the data into like this muddy area. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I, I feel like I, I personally feel like I, I might have de derailed this a little bit. Mike. I'm sorry. I have a tendency <laughs> to do that. So um, I guess to tie this back together, um, Cause like I, I also am super fascinated too about drive to, um, but it's like, so it, it, for you realizing that is that like kind of a, more of a comfort um, like to realize that like, Hey, this is kind of my thing. Like this is the thing I do because there's nothing else I can do. Um, like how, how, like how have you kind of received that? And like, um, and then, you know, how, how has that kind of helped move you forward, you know? <laughs> well, wh who are you asking, Josh? <laughs> you, Mike. <laughs> oh, you. me? Oh, yeah. I thought you were asking Corey. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, I was trying to get it back on the rails because <laughs> I felt like I moved it off the rails. And also um, Corey and I both have this habit of like, I really enjoy uh, pretty much everything Corey says. So we'll end up going <laughs> like Corey and I alone would go on a, a long thing about drive. And uh, yeah, I just, yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Fast forward an hour later, um, everyone's left the stream. They've all fallen asleep. Yeah. So Still waiting for someone to answer I, that question. <laughs> I used to have just just a, real quick on drive, yeah, yeah. but I, I used to have the and I don't anymore, but I probably should put it back up. I used to have the lyrics to Drive by Incubus on 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 my wall because it's such a is it, oh, it talks cool. it that's what it it's all about is just that drive to keep going and everything. It's kind of like a motivational thing, but yeah. 
Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Thing, because like I, you, drive is almost a weird word for for me to use to describe it because it really goes back to that kind of like uh well the best way i could do is contextualize it because i really don't know how else to put it into words but it's like all those things that i talked about last time in part one you know mm -hmm. it wasn't like <laughs> this is it's, uh, it, on, on the surface it sounds completely irresponsible but you know like we were losing our apartment and we we had to find a place to live one of the first things on my mind in any situation like that, it's not the top one because I do have priorities and stuff, but but one of the big things that I think of is like, how am I going to find time to draw? In, in what way can I maintain my drawing habit? And and, and I, I come up with these weird little kind of compromises sometimes, no matter what situation. Like there was, recently I ended up in the emergency room for nothing that was an actual emergency, but I just, I had to go to check something out. It was concerning. And I was going to miss, I was trying to do a daily drawing again, and I was going to miss that. And so, you know, in the midst of what felt like an emergency at that time, I realized that we were going to be there way too long because you just you always are. Anytime you go to a hospital, it's not like going to be an in and out thing. I'm going to have to go in. They're going to have to weigh me, whatever, blood test, this, that, the other thing. And so I was like, oh, well, I should bring a little notepad so that I could at least do some sketching while we're waiting in the, uh, you know, wherever, you know, we're going to be. And the nurses all came in and thought that it was hilarious. They'd never had anybody in the the you know, literally on like the bed with like an IV and I had a EKG thing all over me and stuff. And I'm sitting there like sketching on a little sketch pad while Mel was <laughs> flipping on her phone and stuff. So it's not, I don't call that drive. It's like just uh, almost like a reactionary thing in, in every situation in my life. Uh, oh, new thing came up and now I can't, you know, work at home. How am I going to work on my art other places you know can i draw on the train is there a car ride involved can i draw on the car ride do i have a lunch how long is it what size sketchbook can i bring in a bag that i can take there you know i just that's just how my brain has always worked about this kind of stuff it's always been like almost just as important to me that i find a way to be creative in the day as it is that i remember to bring a bottle of water or a snack in case i get hungry like that kind of thing so I don't, I don't have a way to contextualize that and, and, and share that with someone else to say, do this, you know? Um, Cause for me, it's just, that's the, it's the same as remembering to put down your underwear every day, <laughs> have a sketchbook with me everywhere I go. Uh, so, you know, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that's drive or, or, or what it is, but um that's the main kind of factor that I, I think about when I think of how I get through these things. It's the, the part that I, I'm trying to get through is how do I get back to like my ideal situation, but mm -hmm. not necessarily how do I get back to doing it at all, if that makes sense. It's kind of like encapsulated a little bit because I, I kind of went off on a tangent there. But it, it's never a matter of can I do it at all. It's a matter of can I do it in the way that I would rather be doing it. You know, can I do it with enough time to actually produce a bigger project? Or can I do it with enough freedom to be able to take on commissions and make some money or produce some products to sell, that, that kind of thing. But never am I just not able to do it at all. Even when my hand was busted, I was doing really terrible scribbly drawing. The two and a half month mark, it really it looked looked like kind of scary like maybe i'm not getting my hand back um i started drawing with my left hand <laughs> i started trying to draw circles and boxes and things like that i'm like all right i'll, I'll frank for it i'm just i can't use this one anymore i'll learn to do it again with this one it's just there, there's never a, a scenario where i'm not going to draw or i'm not going to write or i'm not going to be creating in some capacity even if it's not professionally it's just not even an option yeah, I, I do think that's drive. I mean, I think that's a heavy amount of drive and, and there might be more to it. You know, I think there's always more <laughs> to a lot of this hard <laughs> stuff, you know. Yeah. But uh, but I mean, I relate to that a lot. Like, I, I feel like um, I, I've had every opportunity to kind of give up uh, doing my my graphic novel and I just saw it through till it was done. And, and that's the second one I've done, you know, awesome. and it's like, so I, awesome. but 
in order to do that, I, it, it's it's like I almost have to have just a thing where it's like I, I'm not making, you know, I, I have no idea. I'll see the sales numbers, but I doubt I'm making a ton of money on it. Um, but it's like a story I feel compelled to tell. Like I have to tell it. And, and I want the thing like it, it's hard to explain, but like some of it is just kind of almost ritual. <laughs> um, and some of it's like comfort in a weird way and not the story writing itself. Um, that's the weird thing. A lot of people do write like autobio to like, you know, self soothe or whatever. And it's like, that's not mm -hmm. my, I, I, if anything, uh, writing, the books I've been writing has made me feel uncomfortable, you know? Um, but the process is very, um, it, it's like a go-to. Like if I had a difficult day, it is nice to like sit down and do a process that I'm mastering. Like I haven't mastered yet, but I'm really good at it. And I feel at home with it. Like it's, it's like my, it's my baby, you know? Um, yeah. And it's, it is a weird thing because like, yeah, I, I've pretty much found a way for the last, you know, over a decade, uh, you know, to daily work on comics, like for, for most of that time. And in order to do that, yeah, you almost need. A anyhow, my, my point for bringing that up is like, I think there is like a little bit of an element of like almost obsession <laughs> with it. Um, because like, yeah. again, like, you know, there's, there's more lucrative things. Um, I even do more lucrative things, you know, professionally, but I, I have to be doing that to be right in my head. Cause if I'm not, if I'm not producing work that I personally am happy with, um, and I mean, like, to be honest, I'm just not happy with any work. That's not my own work. That's not completely self-authored and, and, like fully happy. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I'm happy. I, th I think I make yeah. good art for other people, but it's like, uh, I feel like I, for me, I have to be working on that stuff or I start, you know, kind of getting a little, um, uh, just like, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm psychologically like at the best place if I'm not working on that stuff. Um, cause I tend to wind up trying to put the things that I want to a accomplish, with my comic or my comics like ahead of or start putting that into other things where I can't really accomplish those things and those things, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's totally rambly. Does that make sense at all? I don't know. Corey, did that make sense or sound? Yeah. Crazy? It's, it's interesting. Cause I used to feel that way. And I think recently I've kind of moved into a position where I don't feel that way anymore. So like That's I used awesome. to feel like I'm I, jealous. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, and I, you know, and I still think like, well, I, I guess I'm doing it now because I enjoy it and because I find it fulfilling. Whereas before I was doing it, you know, um, it was like running away from something, you know, and, and that's, and that's, I was, I was self-medicating with it. And, and now instead of self-medicating with it, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it because I, because I enjoy it. Like I choose to do it because it's the best option that I have rather than uh, feeling like I have to do it. So the, the, the compulsion aspect of it has, has left a little bit, I think. Okay. I can kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, I still go a little nuts. Like I'm, I'm moving into, this is always weird to talk about just because it's just a strange situation. Cause I, I came from industry, you know, I, I've had like a normal job for most of my career, but now that I'm teaching, like there's breaks, there's these big breaks and it's just very strange. Um, and I have found that if I'm not creating stuff, I am an unpleasant person to be around. Like I, you know, like, my wife will encourage me to like, so what, what projects are you working on? You know, like uh, you've, you've been knocking around the house annoying everybody for a little bit, uh, you know, you know? Uh, and so there is still, there's still like a little bit of that, but, but I, um, before I think it was like, I mean, I, I don't need to tell my story cause I have, but um, the, the way I got into illustration uh, was kind of a desperation move to move out of, you know, an unhealthy, uh, emotional and mental situation. And, uh, and so when I don't do that, there used to be a fear that I would get back into that. It's the same thing with like my daughter's bedtime. Um, 
that was like when I when I instituted like a rigid bedtime was when that is a similar time frame to when my wife started getting help for her postpartum depression. And so in my mind, I linked my daughter going to bed at a specific time with like peace in the home. And so it used to be that if she stayed up an extra 10 or 15 minutes, I would start to get really anxious. Like, you know, like these two things are associated with each other. Hmm. Um, and I think I've finally gotten to the point about eight years later to where art and illustration is no longer a compulsion based on fear. And I've moved into the place where I choose to do it because I enjoy it. And I'm doing it just as much as I used to, but it's, I, I wouldn't use the word compulsion anymore though. I would have in the past. Yeah. See, it's weird because it's like, I wouldn't. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm kind of halfway because I definitely feel a compulsion, but it's not like a bad compulsion. Like I don't feel like it's based on fear. I don't feel fear when it comes to that. Um, it's more of just like a... You don't feel fear of what will happen if you don't do it? No. Because that's where I was. I was like, if, if I don't do this, things are going to be bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, so there's a, a knowledge of like um, how I'm wired. Uh, and so like, and that goes for anything positive. I think like working out is a good, a good example of that too, where it's like, it's, it's not so much fear, but just my knowledge of myself and my work habits where I'm like, hey, if I don't do this today, I'm not going to do it tomorrow. Um, so there's that, but I, I, I wouldn't call that so much fear is just like knowing myself, you know, but like for me, it's more just like, no, it's definitely based on like, I enjoy this. I enjoy even if I don't enjoy the process all the time, I just really I actually find a lot of joy in making comics. Like I, I, I like having finished comics um, and I have stories I want to tell, but yeah, I don't feel a, an immense amount of fear um, other than just like the knowledge of my own work habits where it's like, I don't know if that's fear. I don't know. <laughs> I, for me, it full on yeah. was, I mean, for me, it was like, you know, yeah. scared of where I, I would go to a dark place and scared of what would happen if I, you know, didn't maintain. It's kind of like the, you know, the guy on Lost that has to punch in the code because he feels like, you know, I don't want him to see what happens if it doesn't, you know, I've seen what happens if I don't punch yeah. in the code, you know, or whatever. Yeah, um, I can definitely relate to that because there have been other things in my life where I've based them on fear in that way. And I, I think yeah. that's, that is, uh, that sounds really healthy <laughs> to have moved or started moving past that. Um, I don't know. I don't know, Scott, like, what do you think about the compulsion thing? Like, do you, what keeps you making comics? Cause again, like, you know, these aren't the most lucrative things. Um, what, what is it that kind of keeps you driven to make them and stuff? Well, well first, first off speaking of on the, the compulsion thing, I don't know. I, I feel like somehow I, I really dodged that, that, bullet so to speak because i remember when i was younger i did have those kind of compulsions like oh i gotta do this crazy thing like things that could easily equate to like serious ocd were like oh i gotta switch this light switch or different things or if i didn't do something in a certain order something bad was going to happen at some point you know I, I i don't know how but i just i at some point i was just like this is this is crazy not not that anyone that you know i'm not to disparage anyone that, that actually has like OCD or something, but at some point I was just able to rationalize it with, with myself and kind of move beyond it. And those, those thoughts kind of still creep into my mind every once in a while, but then I'm like, okay, I'm not, yeah. And usually it's like, I'm not going to do that. And then nothing bad happens. So, but, but yeah, so I, I know that feeling I have that. I've had that feeling before and, and for whatever reason I was able to kind of steer away from it. Um, and I realized not everyone could do that, but, um, but as far as that drive to keep creating comics or, or art or whatever, I mean, it's, man, I don't, I don't know. It, it kind of goes back to just, it, that's, it's just, this is, you know, it's what I want to, it's what I want to do. And I, and the comics, the comics per se, are that's the hardest thing out of all the stuff that I do because it's so time intensive and there's so little payoff and, and sometimes it isn't rewarding because of all that. 
Um, and that's why, you know, in whatever, however many six years or whatever, I've only put out four issues of my comic. But lately, you know, I've kind of doubled down and, you know, I've got the script for the next two and the other one's almost finished pencils, penciled uh, the latest issue. So, and I've just kind of made that because I knew if otherwise I would, I would just keep putting it aside. I'm like, no, I got to make this a priority that I'm working on this every single day. Um, so sometimes, sometimes it's not so much the drive. It's just, it's, it's pushing yourself to do it, which may be the same thing. I don't know, but, um, but it's not always, uh, it's enjoyable, like in the moment, but it's, all, it's, it's, well, I mean, you guys all know this, but it's just like, okay, yeah, I'm putting little by little. It's going to be so long until it's actually finished. What's yeah. the point? You know, sometimes it's like, I, re ah. I, I relate to that so much. Like today, I literally had that moment before uh, um, uh, Ronnie was nice enough to have me on his channel, but it was like, it was about like, uh, so uh, that's uh, Crimson Owl Comics and we talked yeah. horror and stuff and it was super fun. But it was like five minutes before that, I looked at where I'm at on book two and I saw um, this stack. I'll, I'll, I'll grab it so you can kind of visually see what I'm talking about. So this stack, right, which is uh, all my thumbnails, right, and rough pencils. And I'm printing them out as I go and, and making the type. And I just had this thought like, hey, I'm making progress. Like I'm almost like two thirds of the way through. And then instantly got hit with the two thirds of the way through about like the halfway mark. Yeah. <laughs> if even that, like I'm two thirds of the way through almost to a third of the way through. And then it was just like the weight of that hit me. And then I went on the podcast on, the, on, oh. on, uh, on that show. and was like, Oh, I'm happy and stuff. But it's like, I, I do occasionally have those moments. Um, but overall in general, I tend to, uh, feel like it's it's worth it i guess maybe maybe we're all speaking different things with compulsion like for me i don't think all compulsions are bad like i have a compulsion to breathe and that's healthy you know um i have some other compulsions that are super unhealthy right like and, and um to me i don't know if like that's an unhealthy one you know like the the drawing as long as i'm not drawing while i'm driving you know <laughs> um, uh, although i did have an instructor once in our school who uh did draw when he was driving and got in a couple of car accidents <laughs> really uh, you, you know if you could get a self-driving car you would totally be driving <laughs> i mean oh totally dude self-driving car i would be uh <laughs> further than the close to a third that i'm through my book now <laughs> <laughs> i don't know so d maybe i'm misunderstanding too but it's like um to me, when, when Mike was saying compulsion, and I might be wrong on this, but it just seemed like kind of like that weird thing where you just kind of can't not like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, but yeah, I, it definitely. Yeah, it's I mean, yeah, I, I described it as like just kind of how you always remember to wear your underwear or whatever. Like I, I always have a sketchbook. It's just. I guess that's a compulsion, but I've never really seen it as an unhealthy one because I yeah. could also put it down, you know, like if there's like we're in a social situation or whatever and I got to talk to somebody like I can I can draw and listen at the same time. But if it's like a heavy situation where, you know, I need to pay attention, I can put it down and, and listen and be present, you know, mm -hmm. so it's not like a crutch or something like yeah. I. I mean, maybe it is in a, in a way it is sort of like a safety blanket because I, I definitely am uncomfortable when I do leave without it. That's for sure. But I don't know. Yeah, uh, this is it's deep. That could get deep. <laughs> I like it, though. That. It's it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting thing. So. um, So, OK, so part of what kind of kept you going with it was like, um drive or, or compulsion or whatever, however we want to word it, but definitely like a, a kind of scenario of like, you know, this is the thing I do and I'm yeah. going to keep doing it. Um, yeah, totally. So what, why don't we talk about like the re, re strategizing kind of thing, you know, like meaning like the reinventing um, because, you know, some stuff came up and I think you kind of reassessed a little bit like your approach and, um, 
Yeah. Like what kind of causes that kind of reassessment and what helps you kind of through oh, it? Yeah. Um, um, I'm always kind of looking for how to make stuff work. And, um, and I'm very open to change. I, I think I got to preface this with, with that. Cause that's just, I think kind of key to it. And, and eh, I don't know, in a way it makes me indecisive sometimes too, because I could always see alternatives. Um, and so sometimes I have trouble committing to them. Uh, I, I think over the years that's become more of an issue because I've been through more. So maybe I'm a little bit more cautious than, than I would have been, or maybe I've made so many mistakes that I'm like, Oh, oh I don't know if this is the right decision or not. Is this the, you know, the good path or is this the path where I fall into the pit and hit the spikes? And, um, so there's a little bit of that, um, that makes me kind of analyze things a little bit more, but no, um, it's it's the bob and weave thing, you know, to use a, a sports analogy. And I'm not even a big sports guy, but sports seem to really, um, in my opinion, there's good. There's a lot of parallels between sports and kind of what we're doing, even the injury wise, you know, like needing to stretch before you run a marathon and all that. It all makes sense. Um, and I think that there are parallels with kind of any goal oriented sort of stuff that anybody were to try to do. And so um, I'm kind of losing my, my track a little bit, but uh as far as adapting and uh and you know coming up with solutions it's looking at the situation you know it's looking at the situation and looking back at, at what happened and what caused the problem you know because a lot of times it might look like and i've had some situations where maybe from the outside something looks one way but from you know my perspective from mel's pr perspective from our you know interior of the people who are actually dealing with it it's a it's a little different of a story um because i actually had a a good friend kind of try to give me some tough love recently and and he had pointed out that you know uh i had started this being complex you know so much time ago and that it was this at this time but then it was this and then and i was developing I am and I'm rewriting again and like when is it going to get done and I got really offended <laughs> and I had to kind of lay down you know the timeline that kind of took hours to go through <laughs> in that episode we had about that shouldn't have taken that long but a lot of things happened that are external things that kind of puts context into why Sysfine Complex didn't happen a year ago or, or that why I needed to do rewrites, et cetera. Um, and I, whereas from the outside, it looked like a negative, I saw it as a positive because for me, my personality type, similarly to like what you said, Josh, if I'm not 100% invested, I don't care. And one of the key components for me to be 100% invested is novelty. It really is. It, what's new and exciting? What's the, the fresh thing on the table for me to sink my teeth into? Where is it? And when you talk about, you know, starting a thing and then stopping out of your control, you know, the hand injury thing was six months. That, that was a long time. So by the time I was able to even really get back into it, it was old news. It was it wasn't fresh anymore. It wasn't the new exciting thing. It was the old thing that was supposed to be something, you know. And having not actually completed it yet, not having a finished script, not having finished developing it to any kind of state, I had no real breadcrumbs to re-inspire. So rather than just letting it die, I reinvented, and I think that's you know i could i could get into it more but that's that's the gist of what i'm i'm trying to say is that that ability to analyze reassess and reinvigorate you know don't don't just let an old idea die don't just let an old dream die just because it can't work in the current situation doesn't mean that it can't work maybe it's got to be different maybe you got to tweak it a little bit maybe instead of you know, if you were doing commissions that whole time and now you've had a long hiatus and you can't get the commissions anymore, maybe you're not doing commissions right away. Maybe you're taking time to simmer and produce mm -hmm. some, you know, products to sell as opposed to taking on commissions. Just, there's a number of different ways and, and different scenarios, but my kind of mode of operation <laughs> in the last few years especially hasn't been to, to 
stick too firmly to one mode of thinking, but to be open-minded and to be a, uh, uh, willing to, to adjust, adapt, change course, whatever the case may be, to go where the opportunity is, you know? Because um, that's, in my opinion, the only way that I'm gonna make this work. If I stay rigid, I might miss out on things that are they're right there in front of me that are, you know, clear as day. I could just snatch them, take them and run with them. And uh, so far is so good because that, that has been kind of the case. I, I'm presented with some opportunities sometimes and instead of sticking and being too rigid to change, I, I say yes. And I, I do a thing and it, it works out for a little bit. It opens a new door. And that's, I think, allowed me to still kind of maintain some kind of presence through all those things that happen, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. May not always be able to do exactly the thing that you set out to do, but you could still do something. And, and that's kind of the, the moral of my story there. Wow. Well said. It all, uh, I, I should have mentioned this at the top of the show, but it all kind of connects to this thing that, uh, that Gaz told me years ago, actually. He told me this before uh, any of the stuff happened with my hand. It's actually the reason I'm wearing this shirt today. I'm wearing my special shark shirt today. Nice. Um, he pointed out uh, something about a quote about sharks, and it, it's full of curses, so I'm going to alternate. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit so you guys don't get demonetized for this. But um, I don't know who said it. I really wish that I could find who said it but they said uh do sharks complain about monday no they're up early biting stuff chasing stuff being scary reminding everybody that they're a freaking shark <laughs> and i like that it stuck with me it just stuck with me um I, I like it it's corny it's a little goofy but it's true you know and so if you're if you're an artist if you're a comic artist if you're a writer if you're a musician if you're whatever the thing is that you are you're just that there's no oops, I stubbed my foot. Now I'm not an artist. There's no, ah, crap, the rent's due tomorrow and I don't know what to do. I'm not an artist anymore. Like there, there's so many scenarios that I think people give up and stop. And I, maybe this is controversial, but it feels like when that happens, they were looking for an excuse to give up. They were looking for an opportunity to give up rather than an opportunity to, to pivot and to succeed. Is that, if you're a shark, you're a shark. You're going to be a shark. So be, be a shark. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, I mean, that resonates a lot with me. Um, I, you know, I, I've, I've told this story too, and I want to hear everybody's uh, take on it too, but it's like, um, just long story short, like I, I had a time in my life where I, I left college uh, and just was like doing music and working at like a gas station and had kind of given up on comics, but I'd still talk about like, yeah, one day I'll do a comic, you know, that kind of thing. And then I got robbed at gunpoint and it helped me reassess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had some weird things happen in my life, but that was one of them. And uh, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because, like, very quickly after that, I, like, re-enrolled at the local junior college. I finished up, like, there were, like, two classes I needed to transfer. And I just was, like, the guy who was just delaying because I was, like, mm -hmm. meh, you know. And I needed a wake-up call of, like, I could have died at, like, a, a, a gas station <laughs> working graveyard shifts with nobody knowing who I was. Nobody thought I was a cartoonist at that point, you know, um, and, and like, you know, it, I needed that wake up call at that time. I mean, I was a young, very young man and I needed like a, a, a reality check of like, oh, who am I really right now? You know, like <laughs> and uh, and that helped me get really passionate about comics and get really passionate about art and want to get better. And um, I I think that. Uh, so why I brought that up is like, I've definitely been at points in my life where I did literally give up. Like that was it. I was just like, oh, you know, I'm not an artist or I'm not a whatever, or I'm not going to college or whatever it is. And um, yeah, it's uh, the, the alternative is so much better <laughs> um, to kind of keep swimming. Unless it's something you literally don't want to do. Like if you just True. don't want to do it, like just don't do it. And I, to me, I feel like, if it's something you really, really don't want to do, just be open about it. You don't have to pretend you want to do it, you know? 
Um, yeah. But if it's something you really want to do and it's, and it's a part of like your kind of ambitions in life and stuff. Yeah. Don't sell your dream or your soul for like a pile of cash or for like comfort. Cause it's, it, it, it you're never going to feel good about it. You know, <laughs> like, um, yeah. And, uh, and and I do love the idea of like just keeping swimming um, because like I, I totally agree. I've, I've, you know, when you hit hardships, you kind of have two options, you know? Um, and I, I've been really inspired. Like I remember, you know, Scott quite a few years ago, like, like lost his day job and the way that he navigated that and like built his own thing. Um, and I mean, it's been years since, but it's like, that was so inspiring to me to see um, his attitude, his like strength throughout it. Like he kept moving forward and kind of focusing on the next thing. And it I've seen just, sorry, what? I was just going to say it wasn't uh, the only reason why I had kind of was able to approach it that way is because it happened so many times before that. And I was just like, okay, I'm tired of putting my all into companies and just have them, lay you off you know it just i'm tired of just being a number i'm tired i mean it that doesn't make any sense to me why you know so that's yeah. the reason why it's like i can't continue to do this i mean there's no such thing as job security why why do i keep going after these you know full-time you know yeah quote unquote, secure jobs when it when it's a fallacy so yeah it's like okay i i gotta figure something else out because that definitely doesn't work but the way you navigated it was brilliant and uh, and and very inspiring. Um, I, I can say from the outside, like you know, and obviously I, I'm not you, so I don't know what the what the inside was. But it's like it it was inspiring to me because a lot of people would come to those same conclusions that you were saying, like where it's like, oh, people aren't loyal to you, and I need to kind of build my own thing, and then not do anything. And what was cool watching you through that was you just like, it's like Mike was talking about where he's like, you were a total shark. You just kept swimming and putting stuff out and having faith in it. And it it's really been, um, I think like for people who've been following your channel and stuff, it's been very inspiring to see and oh, yeah. being cool. Um, and I think that's what we should all aspire to do. Um, because it, it just, at the end of the day, it has a much better result because like, let's say you're swimming in the wrong direction. At least you're moving and you, you wouldn't know it was the wrong direction until you move that way. <laughs> um, and if you're moving in the right direction, then it, you're a little bit closer to it. Um, similarly, like that pile of stuff, like if I came home and I let that weight um, hit me of like, I have to draw, I have to do, now I have to take photo references for all of these different poses. That's going to take like a month. Like now I have to pencil it. If I let all of that um, paralyze me, then I wouldn't get a page done. And then it's going to be longer for me to finish, you know, and instead of just being like, nope, what, do, what can I do today to get closer to that thing? And I think, I think, to me, I think that's literally the only thing you can do. You can't kind of think, I, 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 I don't know, maybe <laughs> Corey probably can articulate this better than me, but it, there's like, I think there's a method to back planning so that you have a, a pathway, but then also being flexible and kind of taking it day by day and not getting overstressed. And I've seen this with designers. I've seen it a million times when people have a large workload, um, if they think about the whole, they flip out. Like, and I've seen this with with seasoned designers. I've seen it with new designers. I've, I've you you see this when you work in an office, you know. And but if if people just take it and break it into chunks, like it, it becomes an achievable thing, and they accomplish more than they realize they're even capable of, you know. Um, I don't know, Corey. Is there well, like a science to actually, that? It's actually kind of interesting. Uh, you can't. Like you can't sit down and do your graphic novel, Josh. It's impossible. Yeah, you can sit really down and do isn't. that page. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, n none of us have the capability. It's it's kind of it's kind of the same problem with like social media. Like we are not wired as human beings. Like our mental capacity is not made to empathize with the entire human race, like the entire population of the earth. We're not meant to be connected to that many problems you know and that many whatever and 
and our bodies physically are incapable of sitting down and doing an entire animation or just sitting down and doing an entire graphic novel or sitting down and doing, you know, a, a, a whole catalog or something. But so, so that, that becomes mentally overwhelming because like as a biological imperative, we, we resist that which is physically impossible. But it, so, so then if you, if you can slice it up, you know, and you can say, you know, well, that's impossible to do right now. Right. But I can do this panel, right. Or I can write this paragraph or I can work on this chapter or I can, you know, figure out this character design. Like then your brain is like, yes, that is an achievable thing that won't, won't like break time and space, you know, and, and doesn't fly in the face of like the laws of physics. And so I can handle that. And so th there is kind of like a thing. Um, <clears throat> that book, Big Magic, that I keep talking about, um, so this came to mind as, as Scott was talking. Um, she she has a uh, she has a chapter called Choose Your Delusion. Um, and, her, and her point is we're all we all delude ourselves like we all live off of a delusion because ultimately we have very little control over our surroundings and the universe and whatever, you know, like. We, we can react to a lot of things, um, you know, and like, you know, th those of us that have faith, um, you know, like if we're wrong, then, well, we just, we just die and God never existed and whatever you live your life the way that you lived your life. But if you're right, then you lived your life in a way that, you know, would be in accordance with what happens next. Right. And the same thing with art. Like if you choose the delusion of living an artistic life, you're going to have a very fulfilling life and you're going to, you're going to make a lot of things that, you know, that in, in the process of the creation and process of doing all of that stuff, you may never be financially successful. It's possible that the world might conspire against you to stop you from, you know, from meeting your goals. And yet if that's the delusion that you have, uh, the results of that are going to be pretty positive. You know, you might not be like a New York best times, New York times bestselling author, but having several books under your belt or, you know, a, a, a portfolio full of things that you enjoyed creating uh, is a rather fulfilling life. And it's better than, you know, the delusion of, well, I'm, you know, the odds are against it. I'm not going to make it. And so I'm not going to try because the results of that delusion are, well, you know, you don't know that you couldn't make it. You don't know that you wouldn't have been successful. And you're guaranteeing that. that you're going to fail. You're guaranteeing that you'll never make anything. And you're guaranteeing that you're going to feel empty and hollow because you're ignoring your calling. Um, I love that you pointed out that um, the uh, th that like both are delusions, you know? Yeah. And I think I think that's great because it's like you really don't know. You're not the author of that thing. So it's like and you know, um, and I've been like, uh, and I want, um, I've I've been on this kick lately where I've been like, you know, listening to stuff and reading up on like the history of punk rock, and now it's kind of converting to like the history of hip hop because it's like fusing from the Beastie Boys who started as like a a gutter punk band, like a you know like um, hardcore punk band in New York, and then like kind of merged into hip hop. Um, out of just like love and passion. But the weird thing is the, the story of all these bands has like one arc, which is like some bored kids who are like, I don't really know how to play guitar, but I really want to play guitar. And some bored kids that are like, oh, well, we learned three chords. I've never played a gig, but we got to play a gig. And some of these people who had this like stupid idea to like go get a guitar for whatever and like learn it and start a band for no reason. And then they had these little goals some of these people like revolutionized music in general, like created entire genres of music, but it all starts with like people who are kind of delusional enough to think that they're ready when they're, when they aren't, <laughs> they're delusional enough to think that they're going to get a record deal when they're not good enough. And sometimes they do. It's, 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 it's full of delusion. So I, I think that's actually a really good point. Um, anyhow Corey, sorry that was really interesting um anyhow did we get totally derailed again mike <laughs> no I, I hope, no I'm, okay i'm listening you guys are on some awesome stuff <laughs> yeah i'm digging this um 
I don't know. Does that resonate at all with like kind of your experience with it too, where you were talking about being like a shark and, and kind of moving forward and, um, Oh, totally. I, everything that you guys were talking about is spot on uh, that, that idea of choose your delusions. I mean, that plays into a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about. Cause it's like, you know, at any point in my life, I could have tried to convince myself to, you know, put this down and go another path or something, but I felt this was the, the right way, you know? So there was no reason to try to convince myself otherwise. There was no, it, in a way, it's a lot like faith. You know, you, you'd mentioned faith. It's, it's a lot like that, you know, that I'm pursuing this under the impression that I have faith that it's going to work out. I don't know how. It's a very unlikely kind of career to make work, even, even in the more conventional ways. The, the odds against you are just massive. There's so many, especially now, there's so many artists, there's so much competition. So yeah, I, I think, man, I, it's one of those things that I want a likelihood of success to, to something like trying to be a famous actor or, you know, something along those lines, but without any of the reward, <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> you know, like, your best shot is you get a successful book and maybe a handful of people know your name, but still no one knows your face or recognizes you at a convention. I mean, <laughs> it's not uh you know, it's not a very glorified uh, pursuit, but you know, the difficulty level is still there and the, the chance element of it is still there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it requires a lot of faith, you know, faith, faith in yourself, faith in the universe, you know, faith in the, the laws of random chance. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that idea of choose your delusion, I really like. I actually want to look into that more myself. That that sounds right up my alley. I'd like it's to. An interesting, it's an interesting book. Um, yeah. I don't I don't agree with everything she said, but it's one of those kind of, you know, ethereal, you know, creativity is yeah. out there. You tap into it type. Oh, uh, okay. Um, it's yeah, a little bit I, like I, the secret. <laughs> uh, yeah. Except I, I cringe and recoil every time somebody relates <laughs> something to the secret because the secret is such a crock of crap. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, you know, like the parts about the secret that aren't like total BS, you know, You're right. that part, it's applicable. <laughs> the reason the secret is the reason the secret is so powerful is because some of it is true, and then they they kind of run with it and turn it into just a bunch of garbage. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, and I mean, you know, that, that, that kind of concept. But I mean, I do yeah. think like, well, I mean, let's take it like what you so you you feel you have faith, right, that this will turn into something, and you don't know what, right? <laughs> yeah. If, if ten if ten years from now, you know. You've put in a decade of work towards this thing, you know. You've got a completed book or or three volumes of it or whatever, right? Whatever comes out of that decade, mm -hmm. you've, you've created consistently, uh, you know, due due to that goal and, the, and that focus. Um, is there a result that you would be unhappy with having completed all of that work? Ooh. Um, hmm. I mean. There would be a result that I would be less happy with, but sure. not completely unhappy, no. The, yeah. Just the fact of completing it itself is kind of part of the goal. That's That needs to happen, regardless of how the book is perceived or anything. And actually, you know, I don't know. This is a road that, that you bring up a really interesting question, Corey, because I feel very strongly that anybody myself included but it doesn't have to apply to me anybody if you really put your heart and soul into something people are going to respond i feel like the there's an intrinsic kind of human nature element to that like we just we can tell when when effort when love when passion has been put into something even if the skill level is debatable or whatever it's just there's there's something there's like an it factor in that sort of like this person lived to bring us this thing you know and, I, and so I, I don't know if that if if people really didn't enjoy it, if nobody found it interesting at all, and it just didn't get read, never sold a copy. Yeah, I'd probably be pretty disappointed. But I truly don't think that's gonna happen, just based <laughs> on what I know about people. I don't know. Yeah, that, that would be a reality shaking moment for sure. <laughs> to be continued. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah, see, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. What Gary's saying is interesting. I'm to put that on the screen real quick. But um, if I can get my mouse off the thing, um, I believe the point isn't what your work will become, but what you will become by doing the work. Um, oh, and then yeah. Keith says, artists artists need eyes on their work. Uh, artists work in seclusion, but we need an audience. Both of those things are really interesting. I was talking to somebody. I was on a mission, right? Um, a, a religious mission. And I was talking to somebody and they, and I said, do you believe that God exists? And they said, well, um, I believe that he exists because people believe he exists. You know, like, like for you, God is real. And because you believe God is real, he's real. And so then I asked him the question, I said, do you believe so, so the answer that you need to come to is if no one on earth believed in God, would God exist? Would he still be there? Would he still exist if no one believed in him? And he, he had to go away and think about that. And that's kind of an interesting thing because I do agree that I would be very disappointed if nobody watched my stuff. But at the same time, there's something about the transformative process of creation that becoming something is more important to me than, than having an audience for what I've made. And so there is kind of like, is your is your worth valuable? Is your worth valuable to you because of what you've become, even if there's no audience? And I would argue that yes, it is. Oh, definitely, absolutely. Yeah, I mean that that's why I got so kind of uh, emo uh, I don't know if emotional is the word, but I had such a reaction to the yes, just finishing the book itself needs to happen because that's right. that's like a personal kind of milestone, especially considering the the length of the book that I'm trying to accomplish. It's I mean Josh knows <laughs> he's he's doing it right now. I, I definitely <laughs> am very inspired by that. Um, I, I think about Josh a lot actually when I think about you know when when will I get to that point and and I'm excited about getting to that point when I can turn this into, you know, not just a preliminary planning kind of, you know, what's my battle plan thing, but like showing up to the fight every day. I'm, I'm nervous about that, but I feel like that's going to be, like you said, a transformative experience that is absolutely necessary for me for just my my personal life in general just you know i will die happy knowing i've <laughs> done that <laughs> but also i think if i have any chance at any of the maybe more advanced level kind of goals that i have as well like that would be a logical stepping stone more than a stepping stone that'd be a stepping staircase towards uh anything else that i would want to do you know yeah so, i i think uh it's interesting too and and I, I think I, I want to bring this up. I know, uh, Mike, you, you also have like a hard out at in, in about 14 minutes. So I'm, I'm trying yeah, to kind of bring it up. out. We okay, gonna, cool. We're going to ease out. <laughs> um, but anyhow, uh, so uh, one thing I'm thinking that might thread this a little bit, not that we have to thread it, but it just dawned on me that you were also mentioning flexibility. Um, and I, I, for me, at least at this point in my life, I've found like that there's like a hard kind of mix between the two where it's like the sort of enjoying the journey, showing up, doing the work, right. Uh, kind of, I've come to similar conclusions to what Corey was describing too, because um, I have started realizing, I think I actually enjoy the process. Like mm. even the parts I don't enjoy, I keep showing up. So I must enjoy it. You know, um, I, I think it's almost like a, there are some people who enjoy skateboarding, but they they beat the crap out of their body skateboarding, but they love skateboarding, <laughs> yeah. right? It's, it, it, and most skateboarders wouldn't be like, ah, I hate skateboarding. That's why I do it all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, I love skateboarding and it broke my leg. It broke my arm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, <laughs> I, I feel like that about comics and I've started realizing like, it's okay to like, love it, even though like, and it's like any decent mm. love relationship where sometimes it's abusive, but I love it. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, it, it's work sometimes, but I love it. Like that's comics for me. Um, yeah. And th things you love, you, you know, it's, it's worthwhile to put in that time. Kind of like with a kid, like a kid, it's, it's not always sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes it's like, I haven't slept in five hours. Why am I having to wake up and do this thing? But you do it and then you get rewarded. Like, cause you, and, and it's kind of this love return thing. So I feel like there's a mix between the hard work showing up the kind of almost compulsion obsession, mm -hmm. um, 
but the enjoyment of the process and, and, and the idea of like kind of a, a goal, of course, but then definitely with that flexibility of like uh, accepting that, like our, my delusion, like, like what Corey was saying is like, is open to revision, right? Because my delusion of, um, of completing a graphic novel, like right now I have a good delusion, which is, I was trying to get this thing done by December. That's delusional. Like this is not going to be done by December. <laughs> I'm going to try, <laughs> but it's probably not going to be done by December. I need to be flexible with that delusion, right? Like, um, w while also not being deluded about the real work I'm putting in, like, uh, does that mean it's going to be five more years? Probably not. It's probably going to be about a year from now, as opposed to a year from almost a year ago when I said a year. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but, I think there is a need for that flexibility because also circumstances aren't all completely in our control. And there's a little bit of freedom to that. Like there's freedom to realizing like we have the steering wheel and we can drive, but there's also freedom to knowing that like, sometimes you get cut off by a psychopath on the freeway and that wasn't <laughs> you. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> so it's like, I guess my point is like, um, I, for me, I, I, personally find that i have to try to kind of find a healthy balance between those two uh because I, I you know being a little obsessive about work and about my routines and stuff i can kind of get down on myself and like you know beat myself up if i'm like oh, i missed a day you know like oh yeah uh, the other day i only did eight miles on my bike and i feel like a, a i felt like a failure because i was like every bike ride before that i was like upping the mileage so i'm like i should up it this time i'm just like that with myself sometimes and i have to uh remind myself to like be flexible with the fact of like hey you know i showed up i did the thing that i wanted to do and that's good enough you know um but i do feel like it it requires an embracing of those those two i don't know does that resonate at all or <laughs> oh yeah big time i mean man like big part of my kind of recovery and getting back on my feet to even being able to do this stuff is diving back into studies going back to the basics which you know that's hard to to stomach sometimes it's hard to to take that on and and admit like oh crap i don't know what i'm doing anymore i can't draw a circle you know but that's that's a way to adapt and to kind of dig into those problem areas and, and get yourself back up on your feet you know that's what Corey said about loving the process and learning to love the process, man, I relate to that so much. That's been kind of the saving grace for me in this kind of tail end of all this stuff is learning to love the process again. Cause through, you know, therapy and getting help with all the mental health kind of stuff, it really dug up a lot of stuff and I was questioning a lot of things and I had to learn why it was that I even do any of this in the first place anymore to to find that spark again and to to light it up to keep going and man am I glad that I did because I got this awesome opportunity to to essentially kind of do this commission for this guy that's a lot like what I was doing in high school a lot like what I was doing before I started all this this journey you know like at the start of the journey when the when the goal was clear in my mind you know i'm just gonna take the world by storm with weird art yeah here i go without any kind of plan of how that was gonna happen but now i'm older i'm wiser i've, I've been through a lot of stuff i've tried a lot of things i, I know who i am and where i'm at and what i want to do now and to be able to have that kind of gift at the tail end of that to create something that's nostalgic in that sense to kind of like i don't know almost come full circle in a way um, it has shown me just how much I, it, I enjoy this. It, it really has. I was nervous about doing this commission because I haven't done anything like this in so long. And, I, and on a personal level, I don't know if it shows on the outside yet. That'll remain to be seen when I'm actually done. But on a personal level, I feel like I'm making the best work that I've made in my life. Just, just because I know I'm literally giving it everything I've got, everything. I'm leaving nothing on the table this time. And this guy just has no idea. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to belabor him with all the, the personal stuff and the sentimental stuff that's, you know, gone into it. He's just going to get a cool piece that's three times the size he thought it was going to be. But um, at the end of the day, this has been like uh, a 
big, big, big reminder of why I love this stuff and, and why I love to do what I do and and all of that. And, you know, I think everything that we've touched on today is really, um, I relate to in these very, you know, recent times uh, in a very, very big way. It's like a cluster bomb of all kinds of epiphany inducing uh, things lately. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I guess uh, I, I also I feel like uh, what you're describing resonates, too, because I feel like there are so many things in this world that can kind of make us forget our value. Um, yeah. You know, just as as human beings in general. But <laughs> beyond that, also, like what we're good at, like I, I, I feel like it's very easy um, for people to like kind of lose touch with like what their strengths are and what makes them like what makes them a valuable friend or a valuable um, employee or a valuable, valuable person or a valuable family member. It's like people we're, we're put through a lot of scenarios that can kind of try to um, let you forget your value. And I think it, it's neat to have those moments where you're like, Oh yeah, that's right. Like I'm pretty good at this thing. You know, like what you were describing with the commission where you're like, this is like the best work I've done. You know, having those moments, I think, um, they happen more and more the more you kind of, um, I don't know, maybe practice a little bit of like some of what Scott talks about, you know, where it's, it's like, it, some of it is a mindset where it's like, like, sometimes when you sit down to work and you go, I'm going to do the best work I've ever done. Uh, sometimes that actually happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so there's a little bit of intentionality to it and stuff. So I don't know. Um, what Scott, what does that at all resonate with uh, what, what what you've been kind of doing with the leadership training? I mean, it does seem like they talk about intentionality, but maybe I'm mis misreading it or misunderstanding it. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it was funny because I was gonna, <laughs> that one one defense I have to do is I always have to tell people it's not the secret. So when you guys were talking about that, because it's it is a lot of coming from a way of being, but it's also mm -hmm. taking action on that. It's uh, it's basically you know what's it, I mean. There's a lot of different principles to it, but one of them one of them is uh, be do have. So it's it's what you it's you have you know what you it's your way of being and then that goes into because because you can take those three things and you can put them in different order some people think oh if i do this then i'll have this and then i'll be this i'll be if i if i do all this work then i'll have the house and the the car and all that stuff and then i'll be happy but if you come from a place of being first, it, it just all unfolds. So that's kind of that's that's one of the, the big principles. But yeah, a, a lot of this stuff is is just definitely, you know, what I've been practicing and everything. So I love it. Cool. Well, um, so we're we're coming up towards the one hour and 30 minutes. And Mike, I can't believe it. I've tried to restrain my blabby nature to uh <laughs> to get us to like one minute one hour and and 30 minutes and we're and we're just short of that so i i bet we can probably wrap it and let everybody know uh where they can find all our stuff all right before uh so so we we, we hit that mark which makes me proud because Corey can definitely vouch for the fact that I am really bad at committing to a short timeline. <laughs> oh, you're the only Dude, one. Man. Like, <laughs> None of the rest of us. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah, that's it. No, um, uh, so, um, uh, so before we go, uh, why don't we uh, do a go around and let everybody know where to find uh, our stuff. Uh, you guys are on my channel, so obviously, uh, if you haven't yet, hit subscribe, hit that bell. Uh, that way you get notifications where we're about to go live. But also stick around as Scott's going to close us out, and he will let you guys know another thing you should do to keep track of this show because it bounces from both our channels. Um, other than that, uh, make sure you pick up two stories on Amazon uh or at your local comic book shop maybe uh request that they order it but if you want it on discount for like six bucks uh which is a pretty good deal and i still get the same cut uh from those sales uh go go to amazon if you have prime you get free shipping uh 
Corey, where can everybody find your stuff? I want you to reach out into the ether and pull my stuff out of the air. That's, <laughs> that's where I want you to find it. Actualize it in your mind. Imagine it and it will be there. Oh my also, gosh, I have original Corey Kerr's that just appeared in my room. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can go to CoreyKerr.com uh, if the actualizing and, and imagine doesn't work. Um, CoreyKerr.com, Instagram, YouTube is kind of where I am most of the time. So awesome. if you want to see this thing, it'll probably end up on like an Instagram reel or something later. So that thing is so amazing. Like, uh, I mean, I, I'm still mystified by, <laughs> by that trick it. with the snout. It's, it's really cool. I broke it. So I had to fix it. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. Sorry. It's working better now than it was a second ago. Okay. You you just have to uh, secret it and just imagine that it will right. not break. Okay, Mike, uh, where can everybody find uh, your art? See your awesome commissions that you were just referring to at the near the end. Some of your best work. Where can everybody see that? <laughs> uh, Instagram. Check me out on Instagram. Uh, like I was trying to say before, before my internet was weird. Um, you can't Google me anymore. I mean, you can, but you won't find my Instagram. Don't know why. So you got to manually type in whatever my tag is on, on here. So it's at, you know, whatever, whatever. And you'll find me if you haven't already. But uh, that that's the place to go. That's where I post most of my stuff. And from there, I got all my links and stuff in my bio, all that good jazz. So, yeah. Love it. Um, all right. So hopefully, Mike, you haven't been tweeting out any wacky vaccine conspiracies because that might be. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, no, well, no. <laughs> no. Shadow banning. <laughs> no, um, I was just kidding. Um, so that's why you can't find me on Instagram anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Scott, uh, now that we're all. Oh, oh, and Mike, thank you for coming on. And uh, I do think it was helpful to have that like second part, too. So thanks for providing so much cool content for everybody. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It's was, it was always fun. Rad. Um, all right. So, Scott, uh, first off, like, I really like horror comics. Where can I find your art on a horror comic? Uh, yeah, for that, you can go to surprisecomics.com, and I have a variant cover uh, exclusively to Surprise Comics that you can order through their website. For Ice Cream Man number 25, it's sort of an anniversary issue. And it's a cool cover. It's an homage to uh, the Candyland board game. And it's kind of a cool horror anthology book uh, published through Image. So definitely, uh, definitely check that out. And, uh, you know, these are collectibles. So there's, uh, you know, it's there in, in short. Uh, there's a short print run attached to it and everything. And who knows? I mean, sometimes these things sell out and, and then they start going for, you know, fifty dollars a pop or whatever more or whatever so you never know plus you can get some of my cool art uh and uh other than that uh like josh was talking this show art casters we do the show every single week this week it is on josh's channel next week it'll be on my channel so that, that's kind of confusing but it doesn't have to be confusing if you want to know exactly what whose channel it's going to be on if you want to know who the guest is going to be if you want to know the day the time all that stuff because sometimes that can change too not as frequently as is the back and forth with the channel, uh, but you just uh, go to uh, the description in this video and there will be a link where you can join our mailing list. And basically all that mailing list is, is to send out a, a reminder and let you know all that information that I just talked about. We don't spam you or we haven't in as long as we've had that mailing list, we haven't reached out for any other reason other than that so it's really just for you guys to make it a little easier because youtube doesn't always inform people uh when we go live and stuff so i love it i love it jim yeah. okay so i oh, wanted and thanks to... to everyone in the comments too by the way yeah i i actually really wanted to uh encourage everybody watching this after the fact to make sure you scroll through the comments because there were so many and a lot of it was very funny i noticed one of the comments was nobody put scotty in a corner <laughs> which i think is hilarious um but it's just been a lot of fun like a lot of humor in the chats and uh definitely our kind of humor um so uh, we really appreciate all you guys uh, showing up. I also, before I go, I do want to give one last shout out to uh, Ronnie Gunter, uh, uh, Crimson Owl Comics. They ha he has a great channel. Uh, he just hit 100 subscribers. 
um, go subscribe to his channel. It's great. He and uh, Jason Alexander do a really great um, show, Comics de la Muerte. And uh, it's it, it talks about horror comics and stuff like that. And it was super fun to come on there and talk about horror with them. So uh, make sure you guys go uh, check that out and subscribe and stuff. And then, of course, uh, check out everybody's uh, stuff from this. And we will see you guys on, uh, on, on Scott's channel next week. We're on the Indie Review Show on Monday. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>